G'day folks, well for tonight's little equipment autopsy we have the 5 speed manual transmission out of the Daewoo Lanos that I scrapped some time ago. It's been sitting out in storage ever since and well it's time to get rid of it and I'm not, not just going to throw it in the scrap bin as it is, I figure I'll take it apart and show you what's inside. I'm not 100% sure on the exact stages of the gearing, I believe first gear is up the front, fifth gear is at the back similar to a Toyota transmission but I might be wrong either way let's open it up just have a look I'm not an expert on these so don't take it all for granted and uh, yeah enjoy the show and so far I still have the clutch slave cylinder hydraulic cylinder still attached that operates the clutch lever and pushes the throw out bearing out when you depress the clutch lever throw out bearing pushes out pushes the clutch out of engagement and the uh, transmission can free spin uh, regardless of the engine RPM it just it's not completely engaged it might be slightly touching but it's not engaged to the engine um, so that's about it I don't have the rest of the clutch left that's all gone uh, the slave is full of water actually the slave cylinder pins come out the rods come out but it's just a little hydraulic cylinder So that's water damaged and useless. That should be a speedometer sensor, speedo sensor. Uh, there should be that one there, that's a reverse light sensor. When you put the gearbox into reverse, it will depress a switch inside there. And the reverse lights come on. But that is the actual gear selector. It's designed to be pushed, and pu pushed pulled and rotated into certain positions. You can actually see it there. Yeah, back it's reverse, You've got first, second, third, fourth and then fifth. The Toyota RAV4 that I have is a different reverse is where fifth is, fifth is up here. So you go first, second, third, fourth, um, fifth. So it's a completely different pattern. But it is actually marked on the box. Yeah, reverse, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. hard without leverage. I'll see if I can do that with this unit removed. I don't think I can but either way it doesn't matter. I still have the linkage for it but whoever whoever it was that wanted to buy it uh, I don't think it's actually worth trying to ship it to the UK because of the uh, shipping cost. Shipping cost will be more than what the actual linkage assembly is worth at least from your local wreckers anyway. You probably pay more getting me to ship it out than you will uh, buying it from a local wrecking yard. Anyway, let's start removing bits. I'm going to remove sensors and I'm going to start by removing this backing back plate. The transmission is empty of oil. Um, that's the differential of course. On a rear wheel drive car that is completely independent and separated by a tail shaft assembly. But we'll get into that later. Okay, well I've got the back end plate of it. I think that's either fifth or reverse. I can't get it to go all the way into the uh, gear ranges at the moment, but I think it's because I let water get in there and it's seized. If I pull back, rotate and then pull back, that engages that dog and actually drives. If I turn the input shaft, Sort of. No, nope, can't turn the input shaft. Yeah. That's the input shaft side. That's the output. So I think that's reverse. There's nowhere, nowhere else to go once you're in there. So I'm thinking that's it. But I can't because the transmission isn't actually spinning. I can't get it to go into any of the other ranges that or it's stuck because I let water get in there. Either way, I'm only really here to pull it to bits. I'm not going to do a full detailed demo on it because uh, there are a few out there. Uh, plenty of detailed videos on how manual transmissions work. There's a few videos with cutaway transmissions running. I'd strongly recommend looking at them. 
but for now I'm just going to take this thing apart and show you what's inside it because there are some nice little gears and other bits and pieces. Yeah, you can see there. Yeah, that'd be reverse. So right now that one's running. If that one's running anti-clockwise, that other one. No, they're both running clock anti-clockwise, just at a different rate. It might be fifth gear. I know on the Rav fours, this end here, you can get to it through the. Uh, I think it's the passenger wheel well, and repair repair the fifth gear engagement issue by replacing these uh, little uh, synchros. That bronze or brass disc in there is a synchroniser. That means you don't have to double clutch when changing gears on a man modern manual transmission. A lot of new older cars you do. Okay, it looks like with the uh, selector shaft in the centre position like that, that's neutral. That's where it is at the moment. So if I turn the uh, input shaft, everything spins, but it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't drive the differential properly. It is because of, uh, well, the oil itself is actually dragging it around, but if I actually hold the uh, output of the differential and turn the input shaft at the same time, I can hold the differential stationary by hand. So center position is neutral. Uh, pull, rotate and pull back seems to be reverse. And if I could push it all the way forward, like without the uh, shifter linkage in place, I can't get enough leverage on it to do that, but you'd be able to push it forward and rotate and select all the gears. But yeah, a lot of very closely fitted components in there. There isn't a lot to a uh, manual transmission. I mean, input shaft is that stack there. There's a selector fork there and various synchros. And the gear reduction will be smaller gear. Yeah, smaller gear to larger gear will be first gear. Fifth gear would be the other way around, or pretty much one to one with the engine RPM. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually looked at how a manual transmission works, but basically it's just gear reductions. If your input shaft has a very small gear and your output shaft has a very big gear on it, you're going to have lots of torque but very low RPM. So not very much top end speed, but plenty of torque. Uh, as you go down to one to one, or even beyond that, say, a very small output shaft gear and a very big input shaft gear, you're going to have lots of high speed power, but not enough torque, or not much torque. Uh, it's the same with belt, belts and pulleys, it's the same principle. Exactly the same principle as belts and pulleys. So if you have an electric motor with a uh, tiny little drive pulley on it and a very big pulley on the device that you're driving the device that you're driving is going to be turning fairly slow but it will have multiplied torque from what the motor is actually rated for if the motor is rated for 50 newton meters of torque and you've got a uh, two inch pulley and then a four inch pulley on the device you're driving you're going to have 100 newton meters of torque if that makes any sense give it give or take any losses of course but yeah that's the uh, little selector assembly and that fits down in there to move these uh, drive dogs into place the drive dog engages the synchro and the gear and uh, permits drive to the selected gear whether it's uh, first, second, third, fourth or fifth and there should be five gears but either way we're just going to take this thing apart I'm not an expert on manual transmissions I don't know for sure exactly what gears what. Okay, well that looks like the uh, speedometer pickup, and it is, because it comes straight off the crown wheel. And uh, I'm guessing it has a uh, hole sensor or inductive pickup inside here, because this spins. There's a little shaft that goes up inside, and it drives some kind of rotor inside which I'm guessing has a magnet on it and there is a hole sensor or two or three inside this housing so it's a neat little uh, hole sensor I'm guessing hole type pickup inductive pickup don't know 
either way. Good spare part and probably handy for something. Either way, I've taken the main thrust bearing housing off. I'm just breaking down everything I can. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to loosen all this off. I've taken those out. I'll take the reverse switch out. That doesn't have to be there. It can stay there anyway. Yeah. And then I've got to remove these clips and start removing the back end here so that I can pull all this out. Actually, I might be able to pull the whole gear set out as one, one unit. I'll try and pull the whole gear set out complete. It looks like I can. Yeah, if I leave all that intact and all these cap screws and things in, I should be able to draw the entire gear set out as one unit. Because there's really nothing holding it in. There isn't really. 